Listening to this podcast does not create an attorney-client relationship between you and Hardison and Cochran, Attorneys at Law. Hardison and Cochran does not accept new clients without first obtaining a signed agreement. The information shared in this podcast is for information purposes and should not be intended or taken as legal advice as to yours or anyone else's legal matter. If you have a legal matter, contact an attorney about your specific set of circumstances. Hello and welcome to the Hardison and Cochran Attorneys at Law podcast. I'm your host, Bill Campbell. Today on the podcast, we'll be talking to Ben Cochran. Ben is the managing partner of Hardison and Cochran. Our topic today is North Carolina workers' compensation law basics. If you've recently been injured at work and want to protect yourself legally, this podcast will provide some answers to some basic questions you may have about your situation. Let's bring in Ben now. Ben, if you could, uh, please introduce yourself to the listeners and uh, give them a little background on your career as an attorney. My name's Ben Cochran. I have been practicing workers' compensation law for approximately 15 years now. I have been board certified in workers' compensation law after the practice of five years, uh, which is the requirement in order to obtain a board certification. Board certification means that I am licensed by the North Carolina State Bar to say that I am an expert in workers' compensation law essentially meaning that my primary focus or primary practice in the legal profession is workers' compensation. Okay, let's get right into it. First question, Ben. If someone is injured at work, what are some of the things they need to be doing to protect themselves legally? The first thing you want to do when you're injured on the job is you want to notify your employer. A lot of different employers have procedures or policies in how they want this done. Most of the time, there is some type type of accident report or form that's utilized by an employer so that they can keep an accurate record of what happened. You want to make sure to be as detailed as possible when you're executing these forms. Make sure that they are done the same day that the accident happens. Once you've reported it to your employer, it becomes time for you to seek medical treatment. You ask the employer where to go for medical treatment. In North Carolina, it is their obligation and also their right to direct medical treatment, which means they get to send you to the doctors of their choosing. Once you are told which doctor to go to, when you present to that doctor, it's very important that you do a couple of things. The first thing you want to make sure you do is when you're filling out the paperwork, you indicate that you, the reason you are there is due to a work-related injury. You want to document this as many times as you can, especially in the early onset of the claim. Now, once you've described how the accident happened, you need to make sure that you note every body part that was injured. Even if you don't think it's significantly injured, you need to make sure that you tell the medical provider all the body parts that are injured and explain all the symptoms that you're having. That way, that if something comes up later, there isn't any question as to all the body parts that were injured. What if someone sustains an injury, but, but it isn't known to them right that minute that they're injured? For example, someone simply twists their back when they're picking up an item on Monday, and they might feel a little bit of pain, but they can work through it. But on Tuesday morning, they, they, they simply can't get out of bed, and it's just killing them to get out of bed, and it's obviously that it, it's an injury. Oftentimes, people call the office. And they tell me that they haven't reported the accident yet, that it's just happened, and they need to know what to do. Well, let's say that the accident did just happen the day before, and you didn't report it to your employer because you thought it was going to go away. You didn't think it was going to get worse and affect your ability to perform your daily life activities. But that's happened. Once again, you have to immediately notify your employer. They may tell you, well, come on in, fill out the report, and then we'll work on sending you to a doctor. If that's the case, you want to immediately present to work, fill out the appropriate paperwork, and get to the doctor as soon as possible. If they elect to tell you that they can't fill out any paperwork because it's not the same day, you didn't report it within a 24-hour period, then unfortunately that's false. 
In North Carolina, you have 30 days to provide written notice to the employer of a work-related injury. So you are still within the time period. If that happens, you present to your own doctor, make sure to note to your own doctor how the injuries happened, when you started to feel the symptoms, what exactly occurred, so that we have another documented record that indicates the injury, how it happened, and when it happened. And you want to make sure that you go to the doctor as soon as you can if the employer doesn't tell you when to go. With many legal cases, you know, reports, witnesses, any kind of evidence is obviously a huge deal. So if an injured employee is is called into their employer and they want to talk to them about the accident, what, what do they need to say during that meeting or what do they not need to say uh, from your experiences working with clients who have been injured? When you're speaking with your supervisors about the work-related injury, you want to make sure that you are as forthcoming about all the information that is necessary for them to investigate what happened. You want to make sure to identify any witnesses, people who saw or even heard what happened. You also want to make sure that the manager fills out the appropriate paperwork. There are many times where folks call my office and they say, I told the supervisor, but he didn't write it down. Make sure he writes it down. Additionally, you want to follow up with the supervisor in terms of seeking the medical treatment, making sure the reports are filed, and asking the supervisor if he needs any additional information from you. Put the onus back on your supervisor. Leave the ball with him as to something necessary to be done so that they can't say, well, I was waiting for him to do something. Now, now here's the big question that, that a lot of people have, and I know they have when they, when they call you, is when during the process, after someone's been injured at work, at what point is it smart to obtain the services of a lawyer? When people call my office and ask, when's the appropriate time to hire an attorney? I tell them when there are red flags. Red flags in a worker's compensation claim are first and foremost when the worker's compensation carrier or the employer tell you that they're not going to provide something for you. In North Carolina, worker's compensation benefits primarily entail medical treatment, lost wages due to disability, and the payment of any permanent partial disability based upon a permanent injury. So at any point in time that an insurance company or an employer tells the injured worker, we're not going to authorize medical treatment, we're not going to provide lost wage benefits, or we don't think you're entitled to a settlement, those are three different reasons where the insurance company has thrown up red flags. Those folks, more likely than not, will either need at least consultation on how to remedy the situation or an attorney to help remedy the situation. That is one of the areas of red flags. The other important red flag that I tell folks about is when they're not physically capable of going back to doing their job. So let's say that you are a carpenter and you suffer an injury when you fall from a ladder. And ultimately, after surgeries, the doctor releases you at maximum medical improvement. He says you're as good as you're going to get. But you have restrictions of no climbing ladders. So at that point, you can't go back to doing the same job that you were doing. At that point, your interests become in direct conflict with your employer and the workers' compensation carrier because they no longer can get you back to work where you were working. That means that they will have to continue to pro provide you lost wages until such time as they are capable of getting you back to work. They want to do that for as brief a period as time without taking into consideration your interests and your legal rights. Those folks need attorneys. Some people fear hiring or even simply speaking with a lawyer because they're afraid if it's discovered by their employer that they're going to be fired. So in, in North Carolina, can an employee be fired for simply talking to or hiring a lawyer for their workers' compensation claim? 
in North Carolina, if you file a workers' compensation claim or if you contact an attorney and discuss a workers' compensation claim, an employer cannot simply fire you because of you pursuing those legal rights. In North Carolina, we have laws that protect injured employees from being retaliated upon for pursuing their legal rights. It is called the Retaliatory Employment Discrimination Act. So you do have legal recourse if your employer fires you for contacting an attorney about a workers' compensation claim, or you hire an attorney for a workers' compensation claim, or simply filing a workers' compensation claim. And that concludes our interview with Hardison and Cochran managing partner Ben Cochran about North Carolina workers' compensation law. And I know today we just uh, scratched the surface, and if you have been injured at work, uh, we know you have a million questions probably. And if your specific question was not answered today, you can always go to LawyerNC.com and submit your question for free. An attorney will uh, get a hold of you and answer that question and any other questions you have. And if you want to give us a call and you're in the uh, Triangle area, the phone number is 919-444-4444. If you live in the Greensboro Triad area, it's 336-777-7777. And in Fayetteville and Wilmington areas, it's 910-333-3333. For other episodes and more information about the Hardison Cochran Podcast, please visit LawyerNC.com slash podcast.